Thomas, thank you very much for coming on. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you, Fergus. Uh, pleasure to be here and I'm keeping all well. Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. First question in as few words as possible. Who is Thomas Robson Carnu? Uh, I am a spiritual being living an experiential life and uh, yeah that's sort of if you're asking who I am that's that's fundamentally who I am and how I see myself um, but what have I done you know what is uh, what have I been involved in you know what what have uh, I experienced yeah I think uh, obviously um, be become a professional footballer, uh, played at the top level of uh, you know that the sport, um, international competitions, um, and faced some extreme adversity to get there, um, and some challenges along the way, uh, which were important and all part of the journey. And uh, yeah, those challenges led me to to developing and launching um, one of the UK's fastest growing uh, health drink brands uh, which I'm extremely proud of in the in the, the turmeric company and um, yeah I obviously run, run that now um, as CEO and it's uh, it's part and parcel of, of, of that journey and uh, we're now helping a lot of other people through health and natural nutrition in the form of our turmeric based shot so yeah that's um, sort of me in a in a nutshell I suppose. It's fascinating how you acknowledged that you're just another spiritual being rather than attaching too much of the things that you've achieved, the things that you've done to your identity, which I know is something that you're very keen on discussing in general terms. And I think a lot of it comes down from your understanding of epigenetics and how that manifests itself in your day to day lives, everyone's lives. And it'd just be great to hear from you, your understanding and concept of how that works in our existence and specifically how you understand it in your day to day life. Yeah. So, um, Epigenetics is essentially um, how our behaviors and how our environment can cause changes ultimately to how our genes work, but but further than that begin to influence then the experiences that we begin to have in life and on a day to day basis. And um, it's a started off as a you know a philosophy and and it's now turned into you know, hard science and, you know, realizing that what we think and how we feel actually impacts our genetic makeup and begins to impact the uh, the events and circumstances of our life. And so, although that's a, um, you know, on first thought, it, it's hard to, to grasp and hard to, you know, get your head around, but then once you begin to understand it, it's, uh, it's quite empowering and, uh, you know, really shows that, as human beings, you know, you, you ultimately can control your own destiny by creating your own destiny. So I think that's, um, you know, quite, quite, quite a cool concept. And, and now, um, you know, a, quite a cool reality for, for myself and, and for a lot of people now who are, you know, who are, who are thought leading in that space, which is great to see. When did your um, fascination with that space begin? Because as you said, it, it was more of a philosophy in the past. And I, from from what I've understood, it came to you as a as a as a way of thinking about how you can c c control the future, rather than for any other reason. So, what what age and what circumstances sort of began that journey for you? Yeah, so it's not necessarily about controlling your future; it's more about being present in this moment in time. So it's like you know, and and it's about realizing that the state that you are in at this very moment will dictate the next state that you go into and then the next experience and then the next emotion that you feel. So it, it, it actually has nothing to do with controlling your future as opposed to really being present and understanding where you currently are now. And, and I think that's, uh, that's really important. Um, but, but where did it, um, you know, originally come from was, when I began, you know, became a professional footballer, um, you know, playing in front of, you know, a thousand people as a 16, 15 year old, it was really nerve wracking. And, and, you know, you want to, you want to do well, you want to achieve your dreams. And when you're beginning to experience feelings around events, 
it it's it's quite interesting you know and it's it's and it, and it can go as you know simple as standing up in front of school and speaking to you know the the school assembly as a as a um you know pupil it's like you you begin to feel an emotion and and often not that emotion is fear and anxiety and then ultimately nervousness and so it was beginning to realize you know why would I feel nervous playing in front of you know 10 20 30 thousand people as a young professional and you know I didn't didn't really grasp it because you know it's football I've done it since I was young you know I'm here to enjoy it but then all of a sudden you begin to feel these emotions such as nervousness and and it was beginning to you know really understand why and so that led me towards a book called um, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz and that book began to break down you know the fundamentals of uh, how you can begin to understand what you're feeling and therefore the direction that you take your energy and so you know you, you, your attention goes you know obviously is, is is very important and your energy goes where your attention ultimately flows so it's it's beginning to understand that I'm feeling nervousness but actually breaking that down that was me feeling excitement about the opportunity of playing in front of 10 20 thousand people and playing and doing something which I loved and have loved doing but realizing that it's an opportunity to perform and achieve something which I really want to achieve and so those nerves as I was interpreting could easily have been interpreted as excitement so then I began to shift my mind in a way that I thought and began realizing that whenever I felt what I perceived as nervousness it was actually excitement so therefore I began to channel it in a positive way and it began to shift my understanding and my emotions and my experiences because of that and because of the way I approached it. So I began to think, you know, how, how can that small shift in terms of how I interpret something can have such a dramatic impact on how I'm feeling and therefore the end result, you know, because you can't create in fear. So when you're nervous, you're limiting your creativity or when you perceive yourself as nervous, you're limiting your, your creativity. And so living in a state of freedom and living in a state of creativity, you know, you want to have those associated emotions. So excitement, joy, you know, jubilance, um, yeah, freedom, uh, you know, all of these uh, emotions, which ultimately allow you to create and then allow you to perform and then allow you to you know uh, progress in whatever it is you want to progress in so yeah so that's sort of uh, the, the long way around how I began to look into you know sort of uh, psycho cybernetics and it's fascinating actually because that must have been well, I don't know whether you were aware at the time but at such a young age that was a very enlightened self-aware driven way of understanding the way that you were feeling probably long all before your time in that sense considering these bigger picture these existential thoughts and how you could really turn psychology into a into a weapon for you to develop rather than let it be something that weighed you down at such a young age and do you feel that the second you started shifting those perspectives you became a more expressive a better footballer overall and that is ultimately what allowed you to have the career that you've had um yeah i think it was it was not only for me but it was also you know i i growing up and playing at you know becoming a professional footballer is so competitive you know statistics show that it's harder to become a professional footballer than it is to get into Oxford or Cambridge so it's like you're at the very top of that profession at a very very young age and so you know I was um, you know I had teammates who were the same age as me and we'd be preparing for a game and before the game you know those those teammates were being sick physically sick because of the nervousness that they were interpreting and that sort of you know that that, that really made me think and be like wow like, why is it having such an effect on them because but when you begin to break it down it was because they had there was so much will and so much want to do well that they were then 
turning that into a negative emotion and experience within their own being, which then caused them to, you know, to, 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 to vomit and to have these, um, you know, negative, um, uh, you know, cycles of, of events. And so that wasn't, you know, that, that, uh, that I, I acknowledge that that didn't feel right. And it's like, well, no, like you should still enjoy doing whatever it is that you want to enjoy, uh, you know, do at any level. And even if there is so-called pressure, where is that pressure coming from? And then you begin to realize, oh, okay, that pressure is external or internal. And if it's external, it's because you're now letting your external environment have an impact on you. And what that means is that regardless of what you think of me, I will think of myself how I choose to think of myself. And that's, again, very empowering. Or it could be internal where I'm putting pressure on myself that I need to do well today. If I don't do well today, X, Y, Z will happen. But then if you actually break it down and you begin to think about it at a deeper level, these are just events. So, and you have to, you know, you have to come to a place where you completely detach and you say, you know, I, I, I will, I will control what I can control. And when you begin to look at it in the wider picture, that's very little. You know, I can give my best. I can prepare as best as I can. And I can enjoy the experience and the event as best as possible. Everything apart from that, you can't control. So when you begin to detach in that way and you begin to live in a state of freedom aligned with a state of belief, you then begin to empower yourself and begin to actually enjoy the experience. So regardless of what I may or may not have achieved, I was able to say I absolutely enjoyed the experience and I lived in the moment. And ultimately, that is the key. And so, you know, you look at uh, the mental health in, in football or in sports. It's one of the most underreported and underserved, you know, topics in the world today because there is zero support like fundamental support like like you know there's, there's support which you know we, we talk about okay the fa is supporting and the pfa are supporting but but actually the fundamentals of shaping the way and supporting the way professionals think how they deal with emotions how they deal with expectations um how they perceive pressure is not there. And it's the it is it is the way it is currently because you know there's no one who has you know um been able to implement thought at a deeper level. Um, you know, it's very superficial. But again, there's a reason for that. And and so yeah, I think it's um it's for me it's been an important, you know experience and an important um you know journey of understanding it at at that deeper level and it's allowed you know me to you know achieve what I, what I've you know wanted to achieve and 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 but actually more importantly enjoyed the process while doing it there's a saying that pressure is privilege isn't there which is an interesting concept for me because i always find i always find myself under the most pressure when i know that there's the most opportunity at the end of it and it's taken me a, a lot of time but <laughs> I've learned to understand that actually what excites me the most is that opportunity that's there. So the pressure that I'm feeling now is less a fear of falling short, but more an excitement at actually what might lie on the other side. But what's become really key for me over the past couple of years is that what's more valuable than the end goal is the process to get there. And I think that's very much how most of the modern sports psychology is going in the sense that to enjoy the end goal you must enjoy the process it doesn't work the other way around but how long did it take you from stepping onto that pitch at 16 where you start to feel a bit nervous to actually thinking okay I'm going to read this book where I'm going to understand my perspective a little bit more to being unfalteringly confident and free to interpret your own emotions was it was it a long period was it something that came to you like that or how how did it happen um yeah, first in terms of, you know, achieving what I achieved in sport, it was, I, I suffered with two really bad 
you know, knee injuries and which required surgery. And that gave me a lot of time to, you know, to think, you know, to, to, to meditate on, on what it was that I was experiencing and, and to really understand what it was that I wanted to achieve. And um, through the power of nutrition, um, you know, I was able to return from those injuries and return from, you know, the pain and the inflammation I was experiencing. Um, but in terms of the performance side of, of, of the, you know, the, the game and the journey, this is daily work. It, it doesn't stop. There is no end, and there is no end. There is no end state because there is always. We live in in an experiential world, so every single day you step out of the house and you are going to experience elements and experience um, events, and ultimately experience emotions, which will then trigger thoughts, which can then trigger you know further emotions good or bad you know positive or negative and so it's about being in a you know uh, in in a state where you're acceptant of that you know so this is part of the journey and I'm going to give my best and you know uh, approach it in a in a you know in a state of of being as opposed to a state of ego or state of expectation and yeah ultimately that's where you know that that's where you know I am and 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 you know have been for you know several years, but it's it's still daily work because you know you're driving to work and you're late for work and someone cuts you up and slows down. All of a sudden, you feel a state of and an emotion of fear because you're going to be late, anger because someone's impacting you know you getting to work on time, and so you feel that, but actually that person might be late as well and that person might be rushing or you know that person's got as much going on in their lives as, as you so having that level level of empathy and then understanding okay I'm late yeah okay well you know I may get a fine but you know what, what can I do moving forwards to ensure that I'm you know I'm, I'm not late again and if you take those positive actions then you know and have that positive mindset then you know you're going to be you're going to position yourself in um you know situations and areas which over time you know will will accumulate into you know positive events in your life it's interesting because it sounds like so much of your reframing of nervousness of of your professional career has informed how you live your life and i can imagine it's probably fair to say that your holistic approach to health well-being spirituality is quite different to some of your teammates some of the other football players you've come across in in years gone by and what do you think the key elements are that separate you and where do you think maybe elements of professional football can can come a lot further to to live a more overall holistic well have a have a more holistic well-being all in Hmm. yeah but it doesn't mean that I'm living it the right way and my teammates are living the wrong way or and vice versa it's just that's what they're experiencing and that's what they're you know choosing to do so but it's um you know I think um but in terms of you know living in a state of you know freedom and uh you know uh, uh, having a you know a positive outlook on you know uh, the events that you experience on a day-to-day basis uh, is fundamentally going to support a level of mental well-being which you know if you're living in a state of fear and negativity and you know you, you get caught in that cycle and locked in that cycle and the world's against me and you know I'm everything's not my fault but everything bad is still happening to me I think um you know you're gonna you're gonna eventually face difficulty and you know, in situations where you need positivity to come through it, you're not ultimately going to have that. So, yeah, I think um, in terms of the the support and education, I think it's uh, the education. It's not from it's not only in sport. It's actually from you know from childhood. And you know, you look at our education system. I would you know say that it's broken um, because fundamentally you know we're being our children are for the most part being 
you know, taught to live without creativity, taught to, you know, um, obey, you know, and it's, um, if you, if you go back in history and actually look at the fundamentals of, you know, the education and it's, uh, it's very much a state driven, uh, philosophy, you know, so, and it supports, you know, the industrial world, uh, you know, that we've lived in and obviously coming out now and moving into a technological age. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's about obviously about, you know, obeying and, um, not living in a state of creativity and ultimately a state of freedom. Um, and yeah, so I think we would need to change the way that we educate children first and foremost and begin to educate children on empathy on the on being on nutrition on love on emotions on um you know compassion you know on the uh, you know the the way that we react to events uh, you know on epigenetics you know on on all of these topics uh, you know natural ways to support your health and well-being um you know understanding you know what is money you know what is money uh, money is uh, you know time but how is money created you know is it you know it's printed it's you know so how why why do we have money why is, why do we not live in a free world free society um you know when you begin to look at things at, at a deeper level you begin to you know realize that it's really important that you break away to a degree at least from an emo on an emotional level from the structures that we have grown up in because they're not conducive to living your best life and living in a state of you know true true happiness because we're taught every single day that we should be chasing something and that we should be you know defined by what we have and what we own and really when you look at life you know what, what is life you know you live you know you're born you live and then you die so you can't fundamentally take any form of possession with you when you die so what should our first thought be as a human being should it be a possession you know or should it be something spiritual or something being or you know something connecting you with other beings you know and i think so if you flip that um all of a sudden you you know you begin to change society and you know obviously we live in a living for very difficult times now in terms of uh, you know the, the conflict and the you know the um yeah the the, the varying views of of uh, society uh, today so yeah i think it's um uh, it goes to a deeper level than just sport so it's uh, quite interesting. I, I agree i think the, the my biggest frustration with the current education system and that's a rabbit hole that i don't think will go down because i feel like we could speak for hours on everything wrong with the current one but it, it forces or tries to place children into a state assigned box rather than allowing them to be the person that they truly are and that can be stifling for the rest of their lives and prevents them from being present prevents them from considering who they really are where they want to go how they want to live a more experiential life and that's what caught me out when I was younger and I'm lucky enough to have come to my own conclusions now but it, it, it's as, as a father to be in the future it's intimidating to me to think that my child could be the an attempt could be made to place them into a box that is ultimately not the one that they belong in and um that's why I'm sort of fascinated with this concept and, and and what we do next but what what's amazing from my point of view to see from you from you is that you're in a professional football capacity but you've taken the education on nutrition into your own hands and you've created one of the fastest growing health brands in the UK which is amazing to see and is it fair to say that it was almost created out of desperation from your own experiences from the injuries and the, the two knee injuries with operations that you mentioned before it was ultimately a not a last chance resort, but it was an alternative to the medicine that you were being given as a way of finding your way back to doing what you love, playing football. 
Yeah, I think um, definitely. I think uh, innovation is born out of necessity. I think that's something that is, um, you know, is repeated over time and time again. Um, and I think that that this situation of the turmeric co being born was purely and simply out of a necessity to to recover uh, from the pain and inflammation I was experiencing. And you know, not many people know that the journey that I've been on in terms of becoming a professional footballer and being told that there is there was no way that I would ever play without pain or restriction again and that I would certainly not play at the level that I had hoped to play at you know being told that as a 16 17 year old you know was extremely tough and it was only because you know I was so determined to become a professional footballer and have a career you know that I fought and worked hard to get back into you know uh, into a place where I could you know train and play again but I was hampered with pain swelling and, and inflammation in my knee and then I began having anti-inflammatories so the doctor prescribed me as they do anti-inflammatories and painkillers so I began having these drugs like Smarties and within one two weeks my body just completely rejected them and what I mean by that is I began passing blood in my urine I began having severe nausea I couldn't sleep um, you know had stomach cramps all because of you know the drugs that I was taking but I was taking those to take the edge off the pain and inflammation that I was experiencing but they weren't dealing with the root it was cause. just a mask wasn't it it wasn't so, a solution to the problem at hand correct and so it was at that point where I began you know I basically you know broke down with my father began crying you know tried to walk up the stairs at home and I couldn't walk up the stairs and um because of the pain and literally said there must be a way a natural way to, to to support my recovery and to reduce the pain that I was experiencing to reduce the inflammation that I was experiencing and to reduce the swelling in my knee and so you know we went on a research binge you know over a two-week period went to libraries scoured the internet you know spoke to Ayurvedic Eastern you know um uh, Eastern Asian, you know, uh, uh, medicine, uh, medicinal practitioners, you know, just looked at everything and began to see some patterns of some natural ingredients, which supported, you know, the symptoms that I was experiencing. And these were the likes of pineapple, pomegranate, watermelon, ginger, and then subsequently turmeric. And so my dad began, you know, sourcing these natural raw ingredients and began basically turning them into a blend which I could consume and I was quite fussy as a you know teenager and as a kid about food so I, I really it needed to taste nice for me to eat it you know I, I didn't mind you know uh, if it tasted okay but if it tasted bad like I, I couldn't touch it so my dad basically began making these blends and these versions of the blends with all of these raw natural ingredients in bioavailable forms and um, you know, after two, three weeks, he basically made, you know, what ultimately is the turmeric co shot today. And I remember drinking it for the first time and it was like, wow, like it really knocked my socks off. You know, I'd never had anything that potent and that nutrient rich in my diet before. And <clears throat> looking back, it's only then that you realize that it's only now that you realize that I was really nutrient deficient did you, a, did you have any micronutrients in your diet up until that point well no so as a young professional you know at that time you know your diet consisted of pasta chicken and baked beans you know and so when you actually look at that yeah you've got the protein yeah you've got um you know some carbohydrates not great carbohydrates you know quite high on the glycemic index and you know quite high in sh you know uh, sugars and obviously starch but then actually all of a sudden you know having this shot and this you know elixir with so many different nutrients compounds um you know macronutrients elements of uh, you know key 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 uh, you know uh, photonutrients which i had never ever had or experienced before in my life it really had a massive impact. And so, you know, I, I, I felt it after a few days, it was like, wow, okay, that's different. Like my energy levels were different, but you know, the pain and swelling was still there. And 
you know, I just stuck to it because it felt good. And, you know, after it was around six weeks, I'm awake, I remember waking up, you know, going into, uh, you know, my usual routine into the bathroom, got into the shower. And it was only in the shower that I realized that that was the first time in over two and a half years I had woken up without pain or restriction in my knee. And so for me at that moment in time, it was a light bulb moment because I had been told all of these things by, you know, people of authority, you know, and the, the norm was that you don't recover and you don't play without pain and restriction and you go down the route of drugs and anti-inflammatories and nothing natural can ultimately support you. And so uh, it was, a, you know, definitely a, a, a turning point for, for me. And, you know, it was um, really aligned to, you know, the, the, the quote from Hippocrates of, you know, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. And I think that wasn't a, you know, that's that quote's not a coincidence like he, he didn't he didn't say that for no reason you know this is you know some some serious history we're talking about and um it's events like that where you begin to realize that that is the actual truth you know and and so from that moment on uh, as i said i use the range consistently have used the shots every single day throughout my career um they became ultimately my secret weapon and they began supporting, you know, family, friends, and my other teammates, um, you know, over the last decade, up until the point of us launching <clears throat> them in, you know, the, the range and making them available and accessible to people in all different walks of life. And so, you know, it was in 2016 that I walked into Harrods and I saw a turmeric shot on the shelf. And up until that point, you know, we had ruined dozens upon dozens of blenders, you know, you know, creating these natural, you know, harnessing the, you know, the extracts from these natural ingredients. You know, it was very labor and Turmeric's intensive. Turmeric's not, and not easy to work with either, is it? it? Not at all. You know, stains, it's very fibrous, extremely hard to extract. It, it you know, it, it will, you know, literally stain every single bit that you touch in its raw form obviously, you know, on the route. And so, you know, we'd, ex we'd perfected this extraction technique, which blended them into, you know, uh, blended this into other, you know, really potent, powerful, beneficial ingredients. But then, you know, it then turns into a format, which is actually really enjoyable to, to, to you know, to drink. And so we, we obviously had this at home. And as I said, you know, at this point, we were creating you know, hundreds, you know, hundreds of these shots each week to give to not only myself, but to friends, family members and teammates, you know, who are feeling run down, you know, had aches and pains, uh, you know, or, or had just, uh, you know, completely become, you know, addicted to natural nutrition and, and use them to support their daily health and well-being. And so, um, as I said, I saw this turmeric shot in Harrods and I was like, wow, finally, someone else has realized the power of putting this into a shot format. Like, amazing. Like, I was, you know, so excited. And, you know, as you do as a young professional, you know, I bought the whole shelf of shots, took them home, you know, went to drink them, you know, with my dad and with a few other family members. And we literally had to spit it out we couldn't believe how inferior it was to what we were creating at home. And it was only when we turned the bottle around, when we looked at the ingredients and it, because obviously, you know, at that time it was like, it's a turmeric shot. It must be a turmeric shot. It must be using, you know, other really functional ingredients, real natural ingredients. It must be, but upon turning the bottle, you know, it says 80% apple juice. Well, apple juice is just sugar water, you know, in, in juice format. It's, you know, it's it's very high in sugar and it's very cheap as well. Then it was turmeric powder and the turmeric content was like 2%. And I was like, what? Like, this is a turmeric shot. Like, how can it be 2%? And then <clears throat> literally, and then the other ingredient then was like water. And it was like, not only have they used apple juice, which is one of the cheapest juices and highest in sugar to make, but they've also then added water with this as well. And it was like, it completely blew my mind. And so um, it was because of that, that I was like, we need to bring this to market. We need to 
basically bring what I was using and what changed my life to people in all different walks of life because you know if it's on the shelf people must be looking for it and they were you know and we you know that set about a journey for two years um we built a bespoke production facility because we knew that the quality of the product was key and so we didn't want to compromise the quality or the blend of what worked for me for any other reason you know we didn't want to cut corners you know cut costs it was like no we need to bring exactly what i had used to market and to people's uh, lives and so you know the massive investment went into our own production facility then the operations the logistics we built the, the brand as a digitally native vertical brand so it was all about online experience you know delivering direct to consumers and to our customers and giving them that convenience of not only having a convenient shop which can be kept in the, the fridge and consumed on a daily basis at will but also you know it being chilled and fresh and being delivered in that fresh state so the logistics and everything behind it was you know a, a, a real a real challenge and it was it was it was phenomenal because you know we launched in 2018 and you know within a couple of months we were stocked in the likes of whole foods planet organic we were supplying the likes of england rugby national team and you know now we're in a place you know where we've grown year on year we've seen phenomenal traction um you know we've got over 10,000 positive customer reviews of customers talking about how this product has changed their life um which is just phenomenal and and really motivates you know not only myself but the whole team to to continue to deliver this high quality range to to more and more people um and now we're you know in a position where we're you know, we're serving tens of thousands of people on a daily basis who are using our range and um, and it's growing and the awareness of it is growing and the approach to nutrition and the openness to natural functional nutrition, you know, not cheap apple juice shots, you know, but apple juice and orange juice and water-based shots, like these are high functional, high quality and highly effective shots which are changing people's lives and, you know, we're bringing, bringing them to people um, through the turmeric company and it's uh, yeah it's a, it's a great experience it's fantastic and is, is your dad still part of the business because he he ultimately his background was in herbology wasn't it is that yeah right? yeah so so his uh, his father who died in Nigeria when he was very young um, died in the Biafran war and um, he was um, a, her, a herbologist yeah he you know he looked up he looked after um, people who were sick but with herbs and you know with natural remedies and my dad you know recalls seeing him leave the house and go into the forest and come back with you know multiple leaves and combine them together and you know you know minister minister them to, to people and people literally waking up from you know sickness and from ill health so yeah i think um obviously there there is uh there is some history and you know some destiny there for sure and i think um uh, my dad's still heavily involved in you know the quality and the the quality side and the the product development side and it's a family run business <clears throat> you know we've um, we're, we're we're fully you know uh, pr pr you know we've uh, invested into it our, ourselves and you know it, on the basis of bringing you know health to people and i think it's that whole aspect is really why you know i'm so passionate about it because you know you have the likes of coca-cola mcdonald's you know whatever it is like you know snacks and junk food and fast food and you know the the amount of um uh advertising real estate that these guys have is shocking and begins to um it begins to um educate you on the patterns that we're seeing in society and what i mean by that is that as a society we have never have never had more dis-ease than we have had today we have never had more heart disease we've never had more obesity um you know we've never had more lung disease like all of these you know ailments are there for a reason and when you begin to see the patterns in nutritionally 
let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, you know, when you begin to see the patterns of the food that we eat as a society, the, the ultra processed foods and the impact that that has on people, on people's health um, and the influence that these brands and these corporations have on the purchasing patterns of our children, you know, and, and potentially our children's children begin to make you realise that a sea change needs to happen. And it's happening. You know, people are becoming more and more aware. Um, you know, brands such as the Turmeric Co, you know, who champion natural nutrition, who champion health through natural nutrition, you know, championing, you know, uh, uh, taking positive decisions and creating positive patterns in your life. You know, the that's going to over time begin to support society and that, and that's what we need more of and so that's the passion that we have today we, you know we're helping as we said you know we're, we're, we're well, our customer base you know maybe we've serviced around a hundred thousand people you know change change those people's lives but we want to service a hundred million you know we want to change because then that's when people are going to realize the impact of natural nutrition and we can only do that by continuing to work on a daily basis and improve what we're doing, you know, make our product more cost effective for customers, improve the quality of our customers, improve the convenience of our product for customers. And, and, and so that's what our drive is because we know that we can positively impact people's lives. Um, but we have to do it. It's down to, you know, it's down to us and um, we will continue to support, you know, an awakening and, you know, a, um, you know, a positive change on society. What's, what's best about this, as well, is is in my mind, things like things like your products are almost the key that unlock more habits for your customers. Because I assume you'll have sort of heard of habit stacking, and something that I've experienced firsthand is that I've got these pillars in my life where if one starts to slip, the others start to slip, just because the whole holistic version of myself isn't optimal. And for some people, the Turmeric Co. might be an entry point into a much healthier lifestyle. And that one shot on top of a diet like the one you had when you were younger will then slowly open them up to more information, open up to broader horizons and make them think about things a little bit more, which, as you said, 100,000 customers, those people two years from now might be completely different. They might bring other people on that journey with them. And then before we know it, we are working against those very, very profitable corporations that are doing damage to to children and our perception of purchasing and i think that's what's really fascinating for me and one of the questions i've got for you is, is what what other habits changed and what other elements of your life improved once you started just implementing that that healthier habit of the turmeric blend um daily when you were when you were suffering back in whenever it was when you were 19 years old mm. Yeah, I think it, it certainly begins to support habit, you know, that, that habitual nature. And obviously, you know, habit stacking is, is a really good, um, you know, philosophy and, and methodology to implement into your life because it allows you to build positive patterns. And so ultimately what this was, was, you know, uh, the, the a cornerstone of a positive pattern because it allowed you to realise that, all right, this is a highly natural, highly functional, highly beneficial shot. So if I take this shot, that means that I'm positively actioning and positively um, influencing my life today. And so what that means is that when you have a positive influence, you know, it's like saying, you know, that, that, that old saying, you're a product of your environment. And, and sometimes people say say that and it's like you're your product of your environment and so what that means is if you've had a negative environment as a product you're negative if you've had a positive environment as a product you're positive but actually this is a way to begin to take your environment and positively support the environment and the influences around you which will then begin to support further positive influences and so yeah i think um for me, definitely from a nutritional perspective and from a health, well-being and um, performance perspective, it completely changed my life. And it was, you know, as I said, from 
taking the product within you know uh, six months I've made my first team debut you know within a year from then I've made my international debut within another year from there I've made my Premier League debut and so fundamentally with you know without doubt if I hadn't have taken that shot that first shot and then been consistent about taking it from there and then on I wouldn't have had the career that I had I wouldn't have achieved that and so it was you know part of you know part, all part of that you know that that um building that framework and you need as many you know supporting elements as possible you know in in elite sport they talk about the one percent you know one percent you could win win or lose a game by one percent and if you could do something over a course of time which offers you another one percent then you're more likely to have that percent to get you over the line and and these are the you know the one percent but when you have them over a period of time you know, it's like compound interest, you know, anyone reading, you know, looking to research anything, you know, research around compound interest, because that shows you that. And that's what the term co is, you know, it's compound interest, if you consistently have it over a period of time, the interest, you know, and the interest is basically the payback, what do you get back from this. And so with the term co, as you have it with as you have that range, as you continue to use it, the payback, the compound interest of using it for your health, for your well-being, for your, you know, positive habit stacking, you know, um, uh, and for your ultimately for your life is 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 significant. And so, yeah, for me, you know, the the payback on 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 using the range and still using the range to this to this day, and fortunately now being able to you know order online myself and you know have 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 it whenever I choose um is a massive privilege and and i'm grateful now that more and more people are are, are using it which is fantastic for sure and whilst we're on the topics of behaviors in a in a business or a football setting what are the what are the behaviors that you look for in those around you that they need to they they need to buy into i mean you've got a team of is it 30 30 to 40 team at co is now employee base what 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 are the behaviors that you're looking for with those that you work closely with that make you confident that they're going to sing from the same hymn sheet as you and work towards the same common goal mm-hmm. well the you know first one is is positivity like you want people to have a positive and proactive outlook on on life and therefore on work you know it's it's very easy to as i said you know earlier you know have that mentality of the world's against me you know, if if you have that mentality, it's almost like, well, why do you think that? You know, what what has what has happened in your life for you to feel that? But then you then need to, you know, really, you know, look within yourself and actually ask yourself some tough questions, and say, well, could you have done anything to change that? You know, did you influence that situation in any way which didn't turn out in a positive way? And now and then, you know, what can you do now moving forwards which will positively have you know, an effect on your life. And so, you know, positive, proactive nature, um, reliable, uh, and, you know, be, being able to deal with adversity is, is massive because every single day, you know, as I said, you, we're all experiencing, you know, an element of an experience and, and more often than not, it's adversity. <clears throat> you know, it's most basic, the simplest form of adversity is, you know, you're driving to work. And you have, you're going to get there just on time. Yeah. And a minute away, you know, you, you, you know that you've got 20 seconds to get in and you get stopped at a traffic light, which was green. And it just turns red just as you're about to come up to it and you have to stop. That's adversity. And what people don't realize is that when that happens to you, that actually triggers an avalanche of thoughts and emotions in your head. Ah, oh, that always happens to me. Ah, oh, I knew I was never going to make it. Ah, oh, you know, damn, this is just sums my life up. But then all of a sudden, boom, triggered, 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 triggered. And then you're into a negative cycle. And then that negative cycle creates a negative feedback loop. 
So therefore you're going to experience more negativity. And it's so, so basic when you break it down, the fundamentals, as opposed to literally that happening and being like, oh. Is what it is. Where nothing nothing I could have done about that. Exactly. The light's red, but look, I've got I've got to stop and there's a nice dog. Wouldn't have got to see that if I was driving through it. Things like that. Precisely. Exactly. And so, you know, spotting that, you know, we're talking about people who you surround yourself with, like having that in people is gold dust is gold dust and then um, you know be, being able to you know um come back from adversity um yeah and i think th those are the the real key attributes and obviously you know i'm personally a hard worker but i'm only a hard worker because i do things that i'm passionate about so i don't really feel that it's hard work but if someone was to look at me and be like what do you do on a daily basis how many hours do you work you know a day and you know i tell them and they'd be like that's just not humanly possible but it is because I enjoy doing it. So I don't need to sit down and play FIFA for 12 hours. I'll sit down and process emails and develop a strategy for, you know, next year's plans in the business for 12 hours. I, I get the same kick. So I think that as well is very important. And, you know, when you look at, you know, the likes of, you know, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, you know, they're both, they enjoy doing what they're doing. It's like they, they enjoy the process more than the outcome. Which comes back to a lot of what we said earlier, doesn't yeah, it? That. It really does. It really precisely. does. Precisely. Precisely. So final yeah. final thing for me before we wrap up is um you're obviously at a pivotal stage in, in both elements of your career from a Turmeric Co point of point of view and from a professional football career. What's what's next? What 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 is the bigger picture thinking for you internally at the moment? Where do you want to take those elements of your career and, and how do you feel about the direction that you're going in? 32 years of age. Um, my life is, uh, I'm still waiting for my life to start. You know, I think uh, it's, uh, you know, it's when you, I think football is, um, football is a very unique environment and I'm very privileged to, you know, to be involved in, in football. And I think, um, you know, at 32 years of age, feeling in the best condition of my life, you know, feeling fitter and stronger than I ever have done. Um, and being in a really unique position to, you know, decide what, where it is and what, what it is that I do next is, um, you know, something which I'm very privileged about and, and very grateful for. Um, and, you know, do, do I have, um, you know, I think uh, any footballer, a big part of, being football being a footballer is being committed and, and that's one of my biggest things you know but within football it's you know you don't want to get engulfed in it because there's so much time outside of when you need to perform it's 90 minutes on the weekend you know it's an hour and a half of intense intense training every single day and then there's a lot of preparation and a lot of rest around that but that's physical rest so you know, as I said, for me personally, I've been able to really channel my mental capacity in, in a way which is, you know, built a very, very exciting, you know, brand and business. And um, again, I feel, you know, really privileged and really grateful to, to have achieved that. So for me, you know, looking at what's next, it's, you know, just enjoying every single, you know, moment and every single, you know, experience that, that I've created and, you know, taking things and, um, you know, in, in, in my stride and, you know, really uh, in, enjoying having, having the, you know, the, the opportunities and the challenges and everything that comes with it. So, you know, where, where do I want to go and what, what do I want to achieve? I, you know, I just want to continue to enjoy the journey and wherever that takes me, I'll, you know, I'll be grateful for. So, yeah, I think um, lots of exciting things ahead, obviously, you know, some really amazing, amazing opportunities and, um, you know, whether that's in football, you know, within the business world, you know, within changing other people's lives through natural nutrition, um, you know, reaching reaching more and more people and, you know, championing a, a positive mes message in society around uh, health, wellness and nutrition, I think is um, is extremely, extremely exciting. So, yeah, I think I'm um, looking forward to the next step. Certainly. Continue to be present. Sounds like the summary there which uh, I think is is something we can all learn more from because it's 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 sometimes difficult not to be but being present but being president that would be great but being present is also something that I think um we can all benefit from hugely but no huge thank you for me really enjoyed hearing hearing all about that and 
from the stories you've had to tell and the, and the, the very quick rise of what is going to be an incredibly successful and already is an incredibly successful health health brand and i'm excited to see where you go next and it's great to hear such a refreshing and almost unconventional point of view and approach to to life from somebody in your position so thank you no an absolute pleasure Paris. thank you for having me and uh yeah hopefully you found some value in that and look forward to, to catching up soon speak soon